Hey guys, and hello fam. I wanted to make a quick video about explaining who I was before I decided to let Jesus Christ into my heart and save my life. And I had a lot of really bad feelings about making this video and maybe thinking that some people would judge me, but I'm just going to tell it how it is. So I grew up and I never really grew up with religion in my life at all or was really taught about it too much and that's nobody's fault as far as I'm concerned but one thing that I know is I reached out to God multiple times and there was a period in my life where I was a really 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 good person and then I just got in touch with the uh, with the wrong crowd so I started doing the cool thing and I started doing what everybody else was doing and what everybody else was doing led me down a really really bad path it started as uh, me meeting this guy and of course when you're young you think that the person that you meet is just like the most amazing person in the world so it was my first true boyfriend and I moved in with him and I thought he was amazing he came from a pastor's family and I thought this would be a good a good fit for me and then I found out very quickly that it was not a good fit for me and I had to go to a couple classes and learn how to defend myself and that relationship ended very quickly and I thought it was really right for me. But then after that, I went right back to Jesus and I kept living my life the right way. But then again, what happened was I started dabbling with alcohol and I thought that alcohol was awesome and I could go out and party and be the life of the party and it made me feel good. And I woke up the next day and I didn't feel any anything worse or I didn't feel bad because I was young. So I kept kind of living that lifestyle for a little while. Um, some things happened within my family and then after all of that happened, I'm trying to make this story as quick as possible, so sorry if I ramble, but after all that happened, I realized, um, one of my siblings actually passed away and I was already dabbling with drinking before my sibling passed away but I feel like he went into a certain point of his life where he was somewhat getting controlled by somebody else and after he passed away I knew it that night that something bad had happened so what happened was I was at somebody's birthday party and I had been drinking and I had a really really bad gut feeling in my stomach I was like something's not right and I decided that I needed to just rush to go see if everything was okay because I was getting very contradicting stories from somebody else that was in his life. So what I did was I, like any concerned sister that knew that something was wrong would do, was I just, I head over to the apartment as fast as I could. Of course I was speeding and of course I had alcohol in my system and the first time I got pulled over, it wasn't because I was swerving or anything. It was just because I was speeding. So I got my first DUI. And it was probably the worst time ever because I got out of jail. And one of the first things I found out when I got out of jail was that my brother was not here with us anymore. And that completely crushed me. I didn't know how to handle it. I was pretty upset with God. I didn't know why he would do something like that to us. I was searching for answers and I just couldn't find it. The only way I could find it was in the bottom of a bottle or so I thought. So I legitimately drank every single day. I, I don't think I can recall a day that I didn't drink after uh, my first brother had passed away. And, you know, during this drinking period, I, um, I got another DUI. So I got arrested yet again. And this time I had two choices. One was just go to jail for 30 days and, you know, it's off. You're, you're done. It's over with. Whatever. It's fine. Um, 
But there was a second choice. The second choice was a lot harder. And I felt like God really put himself in my life right then and there. Because I could have easily just decided that I wanted to, you know, just take my 30 days in jail. And this is not a good jail at all. Let me stress that as much as I can. The first jail I went to was fine. You know, it was nothing. It was like a slap on the wrist. The second jail that I got put in was not fun. Um, people harassed you. You had to make a tough name for yourself while you were in jail because I was definitely a mi minority in this jail. Um, but that moment in court, I decided right then and there that I was going to try to change my life around and dedicated myself to a two year long program, which is a whole different story in itself if I want to go over that one day. But they tested you four times a week and they tested for nanograms, which I believe at this point a nanogram is like smaller than a milliliter. I don't know. But, um,. There were a couple times in the program that I tested for things that I didn't even know about. So I went back to jail again. I went to jail more times doing this program than I did actually out there on my own. So when it's about the end of the program and I'm about to graduate, uh, my second brother then passes away. And I did not know how to handle that. I was highly pissed off. I was the last person in my family to speak with him face to face. He drove like an hour, an hour and a half away to come see me. He wanted to talk to me. We sat in this parking lot for like 30 minutes and it was a really, really good conversation. But and he, I should have known at that point that something bad was going to happen because he hugged me so hard. I felt so much love from my brother at that point in my life. I really did. And something just didn't sit well with me. I was like, that just doesn't seem right. But anyways, fast forward. I'm staying at my parents at this time. Um, I walked away from a relationship and I decided to live with my parents for a little while. And the very next morning, I was supposed to appear in court for... You know, you have like your courtly appearances when you're on probation. And uh, right before I was supposed to leave and I was getting picked up to go there, I got, we got a hysterical phone call from his girlfriend and he passed away also. But what I wanted to say in all is that I finally now have Jesus in my life and I feel him in my heart. Sometimes when I listen to music, I totally cry and I interpret the lyrics so different than I used to interpret the lyrics before and also wanted to state the fact that I was not a good person when I was out there drinking. When I first started experimenting with drinking and when my first brother passed away, I was like the happy-go-lucky drunk, like everything's fine, everything's gonna be alright. And then after my second brother passed away, which made me an only child, I turned into the most violent drunk person you could ever imagine. I would go out, you know, I was lying to my parents, and I would go out and I would go to these clubs, I would go to these bars, and if one person said the wrong thing to me, I just completely snapped. And, you know, I was hitting people, I was doing things that weren't myself at all. And then also, while I was going through all that, I would just jump from relationship to relationship thinking that it was right for me. And it never was right for me. And then I ended up breaking a lot of hearts on the way. I was not a good person. I, tr I treated people like I, I needed something from them. I didn't treat them like actual people. I treated them like you owe something to me for some reason. And that's not cool. I'm not proud of that at all. I was a terrible person and I truly am trying to change my life around and become a better person, not for myself, but for Jesus. And I just wanted 
to tell you guys that story because I think that it's important to know that I really feel God in my life and Jesus in my life right now. And it hasn't really been too long since I made the lifestyle change. But since I have, I felt a lot better. I feel like going through things is going a lot smoother than it used to go. And like it's all going to be okay. And it just reassures me. And some people think that they can't be forgiven for their sins. And I'm here to tell you that that's absolutely not true. You can be forgiven to your sin of your sins. But I choose to ask Jesus Christ for forgiveness for my sins. I'm not going to run around and, you know, just apologize for every bad thing that I did. Because, truthfully, I don't remember every bad thing that I did. But I knew that I was a bad person. When I was drinking and I was under the influence, I was a very manipulative person. I just, I just was. I was a terrible human being. And those were all the ev evil spirits that were inside of myself. So... I guess I just wanted to share this to let you guys know that anything is possible. So if you think that you, you can't be forgiven or you're, you're lesser somehow, that you're not a good enough person, that God will forgive you, just remember at the end of the day that God is love and he loves us all. He truly does. And all those things that we did and all the things that I did... I got immediate, and I thought a funny shirt to wear would be karma because I literally, bad things happen to me every time I did something bad. And I feel like I never learned my lesson, but I feel like I finally did. So, hope maybe some people that are lost out there can find something from this. I realize there there's some people out there that don't like me for my post. And that's totally fine too, but I just keep adding more and more prayers to my prayer book. And it is getting huge. So many people need help out there. So, again, if you guys need my help, just let me know. And, um, that was really hard for me to say. So, yeah, I was not a good person at all. But, I love you guys. God bless you. And I hope you all have amazing days tomorrow. Okay, bye.